All right, everyone, it's Wednesday, and yes, uh, my wonderful neighbours have chosen the, the exact moment as I, I start recording to thousands of people watching to get their carpet relayed or, or something like that. It's, it's great stuff. <laughs> But I'm going to try and uh, persevere, and hopefully you can hear me quite uh, clearly. It has been kind of coming and going throughout the day, so maybe they'll stop soon. Worth a try, uh, and I can kind of batter through it when it's it's quiet. Um, yeah, we're we're in the the week leading up to the derby. We're at Wednesday. We're now just what Thursday, Friday, Saturday, just over three days away from the big cup final, Celtic's final match of the season. Uh, and things are quiet, <laughs> unlike my gaffe. Eh? Um, no, nah, things do tend to be quite quiet uh, in the lead up to these matches. It's almost like the the calm before the storm. But there are a couple of very enticing headlines going about at the moment, like Celtic and Rangers dating apps launched for old firm fans to find perfect match. I'm not going to let this bother me throughout the video, I promise. We've also got SNP, MSP, calls for future football club points deductions after Celtic fans urinate and closes during title party chaos. So those are the two stories we'll be discussing today. Matchmaking and urination. Only kidding, we're not discussing that. I'm not joking about it being quiet though, and uh, long-term viewers of Celtic AM and my first love, the wonderful 67 Heel Heel, will know that whenever I'm struggling for something to talk about, I go down the European route. So yeah, let's talk UEFA Champions League. We know that Celtic are now going to be part of the competition proper next season, courtesy of us winning the Premiership this season. Uh, I covered the new format of the UEFA Champions League uh, in a video a couple of weeks ago. It's linked at the top of the screen right now. Uh, I'll definitely revisit the subject over the course of the summer. Um, in fact, if you've got any kind of questions generally on the format, uh, or anything I discuss in this video, please just stick them in a comment below and I'll kind of add it to my wee document for when I do that video, probably sometime in July. Um, today I want to just ponder the, the financials of the new UEFA Champions League uh, because apparently, as I scroll down my document, I was going to say this at the end but I'll do it now, um, the overall fees have gone up 21% uh, from what they were this season to next season so they're up like a fifth it's a hell of a lot more money Celtic can earn but just how much and um, so basically I've got a lot of information here it's taken from a a document UEFA sent out to member associations back on the 22nd of March so uh, a couple of months ago and um, they do state in this that all the provisions are subject to final confirmation by UEFA and cannot be considered as guaranteed income until further notice. But these numbers I'm going to speak about on this video come from UEFA and I suggest they will be um, pretty much how things are going to play out. And as I say, there's some big changes from previous years, so focus, although I'll try and make it as straightforward as possible. Uh, finally, all the fees that I'll mention uh, over the next 10-15 minutes have been exchanged from Euro to pounds uh, using today's exchange rate. I just think it makes it a hell of a lot easier uh, to relate to for everyone. Okay, so there's a number of parts to this and as I say, I'll try and keep it as, as simple as possible. So Celtic are one of the 36 clubs that will play in the new league phase and as a result of us qualifying for this, we will receive a league phase payment of £15.9 million. Now that is guaranteed money it doesn't matter how we perform it doesn't matter if we lose every match and finish 36th in the league table which by the way is a genuine concern for me whatever you do Celtic next season don't finish dead last in this competition but even if we did we've already banked 15.9 million pounds so you can tick that off now for every win we manage in the league phase we'll receive 1.8 
million pounds. For every draw, we'll get 600,000. So let's just say from our eight matches that we win two, draw two, and lose four. Um, you know, I could see that happening if we have a, a decent enough campaign. Uh, you know, beat the couple of pot four teams, get a couple of draws in pot three, and maybe lose the rest. We could do better than this. We could do worse than this. But two wins, two draws would see us bank uh, another four point eight million pounds. Now, on top of this, there is also a new league ranking bonus. It's very simple. Each team is paid a fixed amount based on where they finish in the league table. Um, so the lowest ranked team will receive uh, only around £235,000. It then goes up by that amount for each position, if that makes sense. So 235000 for 36th place. 35th place uh, would get 470,000, 34th would get 705,000, 33rd 940,000 and so on. Should we somehow finish top of this new 36 team league, we would bank uh, 8.46 million. I'm a positive person. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Uh, without being yeah, too dismissive of our chances, this part of the, the financial kind of payment is uh, is unlikely to be majorly lucrative for us. Uh, I'd certainly suggest we'll be in the, the lower half of the league table. So we'll maybe get a couple of million, something like that. Um, there's also bonuses paid out. So if you finished first to eighth, you'll uh, receive a, an additional £1.7 million. If you finish 9th to 16th, you'll receive 850000 And there's obviously plenty more money going round later in the competition, uh, but we'll leave that for January, shall we? Starting to worry that they might have heard me moaning, and that's why they've, uh, they've stopped making all the noise. Oh well, let's move on. Uh, the next part of this is uh, a new factor. Uh, this is pretty complicated. Something UEFA are calling the value pillar. Now, this is a combination of a couple of previous factors. You might remember uh, the TV market pool and also the coefficient payment. So they've merged these two together. And as I say, you know, UEFA, they, they seem to love it complicated and they've certainly achieved their goal here. Um, like, this is proper complicated stuff. Took me like half an hour sitting down um, to, to work out exactly what all this meant. So I, I won't give you all of the information because you don't need it all. I'll give you the important uh, details and make this as simple as possible. Basically, this value pillar is split into two parts, a European part and a non-European part. Uh, and the kind of split of that, the percentage, is uh, actually determined by the, the actual deal signed by UEFA um, in Europe and the rest of the world. So let's just say for argument's sake, um, UEFA brings in £3 billion pounds in TV money from Euro European nations and £1 billion from the rest of the world. Then 75% of this overall fee would be given to the European part of it and 25% left to the non-European part. Now, it's important just to state at this point that non-European doesn't mean that Celtic aren't getting that money and it's going to Yokohama, Marinos, or Cruzeiro, or someone like that. It's just um, a kind of weird way UEFA are doing it, again, for some reason. I probably didn't need to tell you all that, but hopefully you're still with me. It's not massively important. The bit you need to know uh, is the European bit is a mixture of the TV market pool and our position in the, the coefficient table. So basically what will happen is we'll get a ranking uh, based on the TV market pool and we'll also get a ranking based on our position in the coefficient table and that will give us an overall ranking and we'll go up against the other 35 teams and our position in that league table will determine just how much money we get. Um, again, it's a case of like the bottom team getting a fixed amount and then that going up by that fixed amount as you go up the, the table. In this uh, document that I'm talking about, UEFA give the, the example of the bottom place being worth £820,000. Um, so it would then go up 820 for it, each place above that. And it's really hard to know where Celtic would kind of place in this um, this table. Um, basically, our coefficient would hold us back because it's not very good. But the fact that um, the we are in the UK 
yeah, I know, but the UK's kind of market for this would probably um, help us because the UK uh, is one of, if not the biggest kind of TV um, pools in, in Europe. So basically, um, we're not sure exactly where Celtic would come in this. Let's just say uh, that we placed 24th out of the 36 teams. We'd be looking at roughly £10.6 million based on uh, UEFA's figure. So that's a real ballpark figure, I'll be honest with you. Um, but it's just kind of for, for argument's sake. Um, so £10.6 million for the European part. The non-European part's quite simple. That's just divvied up based on a 10-year European UEFA coefficient. Uh, again, we're probably not going to do too well in that, although there are going to be a number of teams probably in the Champions League that haven't really been in Europe for a while. Uh, certainly the Champions League, like Girona, Bologna, uh, Aston Villa. So let's just say we rank 28th out of the 36 teams. We could be looking at around another £2.5 million. Now, a lot of figures there. So let's just recap. £15.9 million confirmed for making the league phase. Let's say we manage two wins and two draws. You'd be adding on £4.8 million. Now, I reckon two wins and two draws would probably see us finish around 24th. That would earn us around three million in our league placing payment. The European part of the value pillar, I've guessed we'd be around twenty fourth for that. As I say, that could be worth ten point six million. And the non European part, if we were twenty eighth, for example, could see us looking at around two point five million. Add those five figures together, and your total comes to £36.8 million. Now, I cannot emphasise enough how this is just a, a projection. However, I don't think it'll be a million miles away. I certainly think it's fair to say it'll be between £30 million and £40 million we'll make in UEFA money. Um, obviously, if we somehow advance further in the tournament, um, go into the knockout rounds, etc., that figure could go up. And it's just, again, worth emphasising you can't drop into the Europa League. Celtic won't play in the Europa League next season. We can't play in the Europa League. It's the Champions League. Uh, and when we're out of the Champions League, we're out of Europe altogether. Now, this is obviously just money from UEFA. It doesn't include ticket sales. Obviously, next season, we'll have four home games, which will sell out. Uh, rather than the three previously. So again, that's what a 33% increase for the club. Last year's adult three-match package cost season ticket holders £138 in total. That was uh, £46 per match. Uh, I don't know anything about this, but I, I guess Celtic will probably keep that per match figure the same and claim that it's a price freeze, but in reality, um, with it being four matches rather than three, uh, we could be looking at £184 this season for adult season ticket holders. I'm well aware that plenty of people um, you know, pay for kids' packages, concessions, and also some people get general sale one-match tickets and, and obviously away supports and stuff like that. But, you know, just looking at the figures again, roughly, Celtic could be making and probably will make over £10 million from ticket sales for the Champions League next year. And again, when you add that on to the money from UEFA, we're really not going to be far off £50 million next season from the Champions League. So this is worth a hell of a lot of money to Celtic. It's great we're there. I think as supporters, we, we now... Um, well, we want to see that money uh, invested and, and spent on players who can, who can help us, you know, who can make the difference at that level and help us get results more consistently. Now, I repeat that I don't think Celtic were miles away in the Champions League this year. Sure, we only got four points and we only had one from our first five games and it's very easy to look at it and feel, um, you know, pretty despondent. Uh, but, you know, certainly at Celtic Park, we competed in those matches. Could well have taken seven points from nine had we beaten Lazio. Now, I'm well aware we didn't, and part of that is the problem, not winning games and not taking chances and, and gifting daft goals, etc. But I think um, with four home games next year, Celtic should be targeting at least two wins from those four games 
uh, at Celtic Park and obviously you've got games on the road and we've kind of looked okay away from home generally over the past couple of seasons, Atletico Madrid aside. So I think there's opportunities for Celtic next season uh, in this tournament. I think personally I think it's going to be really fun. I know a lot of people are against it because it's something new. But generally, I think this is going to spice things up. Uh, the fact that we've now got eight matches rather than six to look forward to just feels better. I want Celtic to be playing European matches more and more as time goes on. And to be honest, as much as I love Scottish football, um, I want that kind of share of European games to become greater because that's the ones where Celtic are going to grow as a, a club and, and really kind of reach their potential, etc. So I think this is positive news. Um, we're going to earn more money as a result. It's just up to the club now to to spend that wisely uh, and bring in quality that's going to help us in this match. Um, but I repeat, I think Celtic will do better than people expect next season. Uh, and yeah, we'll make a hell of a lot of money. Not that we need it with our, our mountains of cash there. Right, okay, if you get any questions, batter them below and I'll do my best to answer them either reply to them or I'll answer them in a future video back tomorrow when I promise we'll talk about the Scottish Cup final and uh, yeah thanks to the, the legends above you can you can start your work again guys